The history of Detroit Diesel roots back to 1938, when General Motors reorganized an older engine company called Winton, which it bought back in 1930. It had been known as a large diesel manufacturer, and the new firm, Cleveland Diesel Engine Division, was meant to scale up the production line. Developed prior in mid-1930s by GM Research Division, the plant was finishing machines and tooling for a production launch of a new, more compact power unit. Back in the day, diesel engines were not as common in small applications, and Detroit diesels had the potential to change that. Beginning in April 1938, the first configurations rolled down the factory line as singles, triples, and six cylinders. The Series 71 was a modular engine much sooner than it was a common practice in the business. All of them were of a two-stroke diesel design, using a gear-driven roadstyle blower for a uniflow scavenging. Air enters through engine passages and cylinder liner openings inside combustion chambers thanks to the blower and at the same time scavenges exhaust out through valves. This design cannot run without a blower. The valve train accommodated a pushrod operated overhead valve setup using two and later four exhaust valves per cylinder. The same camshaft was used to cycle unit injection without high pressure outside the injectors themselves. A two-stroke Detroit was a robust, reliable and relatively efficient worker for a large scale of users. The Vega 71 represented a cylinder displacement in cubic inches, thus about 1.2 liter per cylinder. Both smaller and larger series were made, such as 53 and 92, but the 71 existed alone for nearly two decades. Its engines were designed for both on- and off-road applications, starting with the 171 single-cylinder model. Despite being the smallest and cheapest of them all, it may seem like an uninteresting diesel thumper, but many appreciate the 171 for its rarity and uniqueness. I believe that the story deserves to be said on its behalf. Just like the rest of the early portfolio, the 171 was a low block model, using a traditional stamped steel head gasket with copper firings and lower compression ratio pistons of 17 to 1. Some parts are interchangeable, but the differences between the 171 and others were often significant and many items do not fit, such as piston, cylinder liner, injector or smaller blower. It was a two-valve head engine rated at a continuous power of 15 horsepower or an intermittent 20 horsepower at 1200 rpm. Sometimes it was pushed beyond to a 25 horsepower output at 16 to 1800 rpm, however, it has been found that it does not like that territory above 1200 rpm very much. At a continuous operation, the fuel consumption would settle at around 1 gallon or 4.5 liters of fuel per hour. Introduced in 1938, the 171 was a sheer off-road power plant made as a genset, power takeoff, and a marine unit. There might have been another application built for pumps, but for the scarcity of the information, no one really knows for sure. Despite its single-cylinder concept, the 171 was a heavy pile of cast iron, weighing over 565 pounds, some sources mentioning even as much as 875 pounds for a bare motor. For the gen set, the figure is even higher, at 1480 pounds for the whole power plant. Occasionally, there were additional features on it, like a hand crank and compression release for emergency starting, alongside an emergency shutoff and glow plugs. That was all very seldom seen equipment on the 171. The final part of the single cylinder story is elusive and difficult to dig up even from the official sources. Its end came sometime in early 1940, with a final production number of about 1000 engines. The reason isn't certain either, 
some of the probable ones being its redundancy during the war, a higher price amongst a number of competitors on the market, and then possibly the redundancy with a superior twin cylinder already in the portfolio later on. Currently, less than a hundred is known to survive and parts are getting quite expensive to purchase. A simple head gasket can set you back $325 and a cylinder head can be a four-figure item used. Last but not least interesting fact about the 171 is that GM was working closely with the Navy back in the day and in 1947 the Navy's Engineering Experiment Laboratory came up with an idea regarding turbocharger tests. A proof of concept was finished using the single cylinder Detroit diesel. As we know, the two-stroke series later received turbocharged variants, not the 171 model though. The Detroit Diesel 171 is an amazing machinery and its robustness proves an engine from Johnson & Towers INC which managed to gather 43,000 running hours of its course of lifespan. That's nearly full 5 years of non-stop working. Thank you very much for watching and Happy New Year to all of you. Cheers. <laughs>